have chosen to be here this evening. You knew and preordained that at this moment, on this day, on this evening, that it will be us that will be here in your presence. So I ask, Lord, that you will speak to us, that you will teach us, that you will revive us, that you will instruct us, that you comfort the hearts that are ailing, that you heal the bodies that are ailing, that you refresh the spirits that are down, that, Father, you will give me the tongue of the learned, because I'm only a vessel, and I'm here to hear from you as well. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may take your seats. Um, I want to first set the record straight. I am not a pastor. I am a daughter of the king. Kabaka. A child of God. Um, that, that calling has not come yet. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Um, I'm privileged to be here. I want to thank God who has given me this opportunity to come and share and learn together with you. I want to honor the anointing in this place. I honor the pastor of pastors of Build the City Church and the senior pastor, Pastor Samuel and all of you ministers in this ministry. We want to thank God for you for your labor is not in vain. Thank you for laboring in the spirit. Thank you for relentlessly sharing the gospel. Using every opportunity that you have to share the gospel with the world. Because it's not just Buebaja. I follow a number of your social media handles. And so I know for a fact that you have been relentless in the pursuit of sharing the kingdom of God. Um, those of you who were here last Friday, my name is Charity. Um, many of you know I come here most Fridays. Those of you who were here last Friday, we talked about bringing the kingdom. Pastor Samuel taught us about bringing the kingdom of God down on earth. And among the many things he talked about, he talked about uh, Mordecai. He gave us an example of Mordecai who was a gatekeeper. You all know the story of Esther. And how he stood in the gap to make sure that Esther fulfilled her mandate. And how we all need to be gatekeepers. And, and those things stayed with me. And I kept thinking about... Um, the things that are very close to my heart regarding purpose, mandate, dominion. And because we are here for a reason. Uh, some are in school. Some are working. But all those are just journeys to where we are supposed to be. And for us to be able to do that, God has given us principles that we need to follow. He has given us his word. 
And his word is his principle that guides us where we need to be. And so today, I would like us to speak about some of the principles that he has given to us that encourage us to be who we should be and to continue our pursuit of God. So as I meditated upon the word, I felt strongly going back to the beginning. And so I want us to read um, the scripture in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Um, I'm going to read. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and, and darkness was on the was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light. That it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day. And the darkness he called light. So evening and morning were the first day. Then God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. And let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. So the heaven and the morning were the second day. So the evening and the morning were the second day. Then God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together in one place. And let the, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth. And the gathering together of the waters he called seas. And he saw that it was good. Then the earth brought. The, the, let the, then he said, Let the earth bring forth grass. The herb that yields seed. The, the herb that yields seed. And the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind whose seed is in itself on the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and the, the herb that yields seed according to its kind and the tree that yields fruit whose seed in itself according to its kind and God saw it was good and so the evening and the morning were the third so day we so we continue on and on and on you know the story of creation and, and, and what I want us to note is the order in which God created these things so he made the, the heavens, he made the earth, he made the, the, the fruit trees, he made light, he made darkness, and all these things he said that they were good. So when he had done all these things, the waters and the earth, in verse 26, he said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea 
over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. He created them male and female. He created them. Praise the Lord. Amen. Why are we reading this uh, uh, portion of scripture? We know how God, we, I think if we went to Sunday school, if we ever school, went to church when we were young, we were this is one of the church. stories that we all had. We all know how God created, he created this, it was good. But what I would like us to focus on this evening is the fact that God is a God of order. And so he put all these things in place first. Which essentially are systems of production. And after he has created them, he created man. And when he created man, he said, let us create this man in our image and in our likeness. In other words, for him to function like us, to function like God. So he created us to look like him and to function like him. And we have just seen that before that he was creating. So if we were created to function like him, we were therefore created to equally create. And he already gave a template for us. He already created the earth and the seas and the water and the fish and Everything. for us to have dominion over it. So God knows that we desire purpose. Because I am sure each one of us here there are days you wake up and you go to work but at the end of the day you are saying what was I actually doing? As we go through life, we have successes, we have frustrations, because in this world we shall have trouble, as the word says, but I na, have overcome the world. Na that's what he says. So all these things combined together to make us question some of the decisions we make or the decisions we need to make or the places we need to go. What do I want to study? Where do I want to work? What kind of vocation do I need to be involved in? How many children do I want to have? How am I supposed to raise them? Uh, what is it that I want to be when I am retired? The things that go through the human mind. I don't know if it happens for you. But God knew us before we were formed. And remember he created us in his likeness. That we may function like him. But many times we have forgotten. That he's the God of principles. And that if we hold fast on these principles. We will reach where we need to be and not look back and regret. The other thing about this portion of scripture is to remind us that God has a value system. The order in which he creates things, the permission that he gives us to rule over them, and 
the knowledge that he gives us to be able to rule over these things or to use these things so because he has a value system all his things are in order and if you think about a system if you notice in the world the nations that have proper systems they rule over the others because they have understood the principle my people perish because of lack of knowledge so what is it that we have missed in our journey of salvation in our journey of identity in our journey of knowing who we are in our journey of trying to do that which God created us for if you say that you are going to function like me what is it that I'm, what is it am I missing so since he created me to function like him he also set up an environment for us in which to flourish so that we fulfill our full potential if you think about systems again even our bodies have 11 systems right the, the, the the students students who are here abasomi systems for, for, for reproduction systems of our bones our skeletal systems I don't know I don't remember the rest but all I know is that there are 11 isn't it the scientists in the room hmm? so everything has been planned to get together and function properly and function effectively but I want us to bring this back to ourselves as individuals there are things that we need to be there are things we have been crying to God for there are battles we are fighting there are uh, mountains we are climbing there are things that we need to reach and touch but they are all here in the principles of God and the devil has been very smart at making us forget what we need to follow to get to victory therefore those who look at and understand what God has done and convert it and utilize it will reach their destination because those that know they are God you remember Daniel shall do great exploits I don't want to dwell on that very much because we started here with the, the creation of God. And so I want us to focus on one of the, of the, of the principles that God has given to us. He has provided for us everything that we need for life and godliness. Isn't in Job chapter 12 Job chapter 12 verse 7 It says But now Ask the beasts and they will teach you And the birds of the air and they will tell you Or speak to the earth and it will teach you and the, and the fish of the sea will explain to you. Does that surprise you? God is asking the things that he created and he gave us dominion over. Now over time he's saying ask the beasts and they will teach you. 
beasts that he created and later at the end of it all created us in his likeness and said we would have dominion over them now he wants us to look at them and they, they teach us that the fish will explain when I'm reading the Bible I like to visualize things so I was imagining myself listening to the fish to explain I was imagining myself asking the birds to tell me asking the beasts to teach me. But essentially he's saying look at my creation. What I have made. There are characteristics about them that should teach you what you need to do. Somewhere he says look at the birds of the air. They do not plant fields. But I dress them like King Solomon. So in other words he's teaching us faith. He's teaching us not to worry. To look at what he has created, learn from it, and be able to do what we need to do. And be able to be what we need to be. So as I thought about these beasts and birds and fish, I realized God has given us everything. He has shown us the way like the Bible says that he has set everything in motion and he has given us his power in his likeness to be able to do great exploits. Amen. So as I was thinking about these animals I thought okay which of the animals that really teach and yet we are not learning as much as we should. I don't know about you. But it took me back to us as Christians. Our churches are full. The mosques are full, I believe. The fellowships are full. But what is it that's not happening? Why is it that we are not converting? I don't mean conversion in terms of personal transformation. But being able to have dominion. If we are to, to rule, we rule in education. If we are to rule, we rule in the business sector. If we are to rule, we rule in governance or the things that God has given to us that let us create man in my image and in my likeness, in our likeness, the, the three in one God. Think about the functions of the three in one God. God the Father, who God the Son, the Son who died for us that we may be delivered and give us life eternal, the Holy Spirit who is our comforter, our teacher, our helper, who reminds us of all things, who teaches us day in, day out, who corrects us, who tells here this is the way going in it, that we have all that but there's still something lacking what is it that we have missed the principles of God we are not following them and I, I pray that every time we enter church that we come out with something that when we come out with that something and we go into our closets and we start to ask God and pray over the word that we have received and therein God gives us strategies if it's a church I know how to 
how do I lead or work or serve in the church? To bring about transformation that build the city aims at. As an usher in the church. What transformation am I contributing to? What is it that I'm doing that's creating impact? That I'm becoming influential. So much so that many people will want to come and partake of that which has happened. And so God says, go to the beasts and let them teach you. And the birds of the air and let them speak to you. They will tell you. And so of the, of the birds that fascinate me is an ego. And an ego has so many characteristics. It is generally a very fascinating bird. One of the characteristics of an ego is that it has very strong vision. Now this, is, this is science. Okay? I'm not a scientist though. Uh, they have a very strong vision. The books tell us that they can see as far as five kilometers away. So what vision of God do we have? Remember the Bible has says, let the birds tell you. What vision of God do I have? What God do I know? Do I know the heart of God? Or do I know the hand of God? Do I come to church to ask God for help? Or do I come for transformation? Proverbs 23:26 says, My child, give me your heart and observe my ways. That the only way to observe the ways of God is if I have given him my heart. So what is your vision of God? Only if you know your God shall you be able to do great exploits. Because without vision a people are do what? Do what? Cast off restraint. Is that what the Bible says? Sorry. That people cast off restraint. Because they just move uh, without a vision, without direction, without anything. So if this ego sees so far away, I should be able to see that I know my God in his fullness. That I don't only know the God of prosperity, that I know the God who heals, I know the God who transforms, I know the God who teaches, I know the God who rebukes me, I know the God who creates, and that I'm in his image, and I'm in his likeness, and I can equally create like him. That my vision should be very strong, because I know a strong God. Praise the Lord. Amen. If we know where we are going, then we will be able to see what, where we are going. The other thing is that egos fly at a very high altitude. Unlike other birds, and so because they fly very high, they are usually the only ones there. Sometimes the elevation we pray for may require our isolation. That I go far away from all the destructions of the world and be able to hear and see God clearly and see things from the way God is seeing them from above. When I'm here in the middle of so much difficulty, sometimes we need a bird's eye view so that our perspective is much broader and I'm not lost in the middle of so many small things and therefore get distracted. So imagine if the ego 
strong as it is if it was in the middle of so many other birds the speed at which it moves would be less maybe there are potential accidents maybe it will be uh, distracted by preying on other small birds that it eats but it flies at a very high altitude so we are required as Christians to fly so high to move higher than everything we are told that every time Moses went that Moses knew the ways of God he was every time he went to the mountain he came back shining no glory no wonder the Bible tells us yes, that he knew the ways of God. So just like an eagle that flies high above at a very high altitude as Balokole as people who know God we are required to fly higher to go above our circumstances the things that trouble us the things that confuse us the, 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 the troubles of the world because once we are involved once we are here at this level we will be able to, to, to get mixed up one of the things that um, that eats an eagle's eggs is a snake. As strong and as powerful as an eagle is, it has a snake that eats. It likes to eat the eagle's eggs. And and so I want you to think about this. For for it, that those are its children. So it guards them jealously. So, so every time an ego sees a snake so, it, it carries it it carries it to the highest altitude because snakes do not survive at a certain altitude. So every time there are things that are around us, we are required to move higher and fight at this level because after all we are at this level, we are not at this level. Remember Genesis 1.26 that we talked about at the beginning. In the image of God who is the higher than everything who is stronger than everything and therefore we are able to fight at this level so what the ego does it just drops the snake and it hits the ground when it's dead praise the Lord amen amen, amen. amen. so again ask the birds and they will tell you as the word says eagles fly with eagles only they don't fly with other birds. Amos 3.3 Do two walk together unless they are great. If you are an eagle who are you flying with? Who is your connection? Who is your company? Who is your company? Where do you get your inspiration? Hallelujah. They don't fly with other birds. Remember, we have said from the beginning that, that they are one of the strongest birds, if not the strongest, and the mightiest, I believe. And so they don't fly with others. We have been created in God's image. We are that special. We are that powerful. We move at a higher level. So we can't be moving with other birds that are not uh, in that category. The other characteristic is that eagles don't eat dead things. You've seen all these, all of you in Kampala have seen Karori. You've seen all these other birds, they eat their things. We have so many vultures. But because don't eat dead things. They eat only things which are alive. What are you feeding your spirit? Even your body. 
What are you feeding your spirit? Joshua says, Joshua Gamba. Do not allow the book of the law to depart from your mouth. Day by day, what are you feeding on? We are required to go back to the source. The Bible says we need to study to be approved. We have to study the word until the word becomes flesh. Until we can touch it. Because in the beginning God was the, the word was God and the word was with God and the word was God. And so if he is God and we are studying and we are reading our Bibles every day. It means we are actually looking at God. Because the word is God. And if the word is God. And the Bible says that the word became flesh. Therefore we are able to touch all the things that God has spoken about in his word. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen. 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 So we study to be approved. So and so when we take it back to our first portion, that he gave us dominion, we shall not have dominion unless we have God's word and his principles in thought and in action. I think the gospel has been preached for many years. But I think sometimes we have focused on God's hand more than his heart. And so we have some of the principles he wanted us to have. And one of the simple ones is what we are talking about right now. Ask the beasts and they will teach you. Ask the birds of the air and they will tell you. So the ego is telling us the other characteristic of an ego is that they love the storm. When there is a big storm they glide so gently they move they are the only ones in the sky sometimes we don't see them because they fly at a very high altitude as we said earlier so when the clouds gather they get excited because they are able to move they are able to move as, as they should, as they always do. So when problems come, what do we do as Christians? We cry. We call the pastor. We say God is not there. We ask him so many questions. Where are you? How come? Why is it that this is not resolved? But essentially the bird is teaching us that every time we find ourselves in trouble that we look out for the opportunity in that trouble. We begin to say, okay, in this world we shall have trouble but be of good cheer for I have overcome the world that we will worship that we will praise him because one thing for sure the Bible has told us that the devil comes to steal kill and destroy meaning first and foremost he's a thief and if he's a thief the one thing that the thief fears the most at the beginning is noise isn't it as soon as you make noise, the thief will run. So under those circumstances, ideally when there is trouble and there is a thief who has stolen our peace, who has stolen our health, who has stolen our finances, stolen our marriages, we make a joyful noise. Whether we feel it, whether we want it, but we just make a joyful noise. Because, because the, the noise chases away the thief. Many times when I cannot pray, I will play worship music. 
just sing along because I know that that, is, that worship for me is warfare because those times will be there so when problems come we look at them as opportunity for God to be able to reveal himself because that right there is understanding and God responds to understanding because he says he has overcome the world we already know the end uh, but we just mixed up with other birds that are not eagles. So in the meantime, so, during the storm, mumbuyaga, the other birds hide. When everybody else has run away, we have to remain. Remember, they are the ones that stay in the storm. The rest of the birds will hide because they cannot handle the pressure. So when everybody has gone, when our friends have left us, when our our parents, our siblings, our, our best people are not there to be with us in the storm. We have to remain standing. Just like like the eagle remains in the skies. Because if we are achievers and we are more than conquerors, we will be encouraged by that storm. Because during that storm, one thing we are sure of is that God will show up and he will show up, show off on our behalf. Praise the Lord. Amen. Um, another characteristic is um, an ego tests before it trusts. And this is especially for the young people. So, when the female ego is going to meet with the male ego, it picks a fig and it flies very high, like we said earlier. And it drops it. So, when it drops it, the male, the male ego is supposed to run after that fig and catch it and bring it to to the, to the female ego. But what happens, it becomes a game. So they keep, they keep running after this so the female is always ahead of the male and tries to get this fig until the other one gets it and brings it back to it. So it, so it will keep flying up and down using this twig until the male ego is able to catch the fig and give it to the female fig. So for the decisions you are making so, eh, 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 are you trusting before you test? In others, we're saying focus on purpose and vision. Those who are planning to marry, those who are here and are planning to marry, and not the money and the strength that someone has. So, test anything that is intended for partnership. Even those who are planning partnerships in business, we need to test. And the way some of the ways we test is by praying. Of course, we are, not going to do, we are not going to do exams with people. But we are going to seek God. So if an ego tests before it trusts, we all have to do the same. Because it's about purpose and vision. It's about functioning like God. Remember that is our principle. Uh, when an ego grows old, its, its feathers become very weak and heavy. In your journey of salvation, what is heavy on you? What has been heavy? 
And because of the heaviness of these feathers, it can't fly as fast. It can't fly as high as it used to. And therefore there is one bird, I forget the name of that bird, that eats an ego that's weak. So, during that season, it goes very far away in the mountains where there is nothing else. Solitude. When you are heavy, where do you go? The ego goes to the mountains. And at the mountain of the Lord, there is what? Your word. The word of God. What is at the mountain of the Lord? Mm-hmm. So we go back to God. We, we take ourselves away from the heaviness that we feel. You be alone. And alone doesn't mean going to prayer mountain. Alone means making time to focus on God without distraction. You ask yourself the truth about yourself, the truth about God, the the truth about the circumstances you're going through, and get to understand what God is saying in that season. While, while this ego is in the solitude in the mountains it plucks out all the feathers remember they have grown old they are weak and they are heavy so it plucks all of them out it's a very painful process because it uses its its beak to pull them out and then it becomes completely exposed and that is how we need to come to God when we are fully exposed with all nakedness and telling him exactly how we feel and showing him all our trouble and not pretending to be holier than thou and not to come and say oh praise the Lord oh I honor you Jesus or even when it is not true and I have sinned and fallen short of your glory but here I am you and I let us reason together because that's what he says because he knows everything about us so this ego stays in hiding until the feathers grow back so in that solitude we stay until God gives us a word we stay until God gives us direction we stay until he gives us strategy otherwise we shall be saying confusing things otherwise we shall be following a road that we are not supposed to follow apart from the feathers it's, it's nails I don't know whether they are called nails they also become old and bent yes. They become bent. And remember they are the ones that it uses to eat. Remember it eats things that are alive. It eats flesh. So when they become old and bent, they are no longer functional. So it hits these clothes on the rocks so that they fall out. It is very painful. So there are things we have to painfully let go of. There are old things. For the former things are gone and behold the new has come. So the things that have to fall off sometimes are things that we enjoy sometimes are things that are not not beneficial to us they are not useful to us but they have to fall off. We have to painfully hit off the things that encumber us that make us fail to move ahead. And this 
whole process of removing things it happens when the ego is 30 years old and it, remember it has stayed in the mountain and after the feathers have grown back and the clothes have grown it leaves another 40 years can you imagine look to the birds let them tell you look at the beasts and let them teach you so once we have removed all these things from ourselves we know that we have much more time to enjoy in the refreshing of God with a new perspective of God because we have gotten rid of all encumbrances because we have gotten rid of the old things we have gotten rid of the heaviness we have said God it is here the thing that has been on my shoulders I have let go of it it has been painful my marriage has been a pain my child has been wayward my finances have been an issue but they are here I am not going to focus on them I am coming with a fresh new body a fresh new spirit and I am ready to move another journey with a refreshed mind with a transformed life praise the Lord Amen. So how much do we know God? So how much do we know of his principles? The things that he has showed us in his word from e time immemorial. E e Which ones have we followed? Bili wabye to be able to fulfill our purpose. You remember Jesus saying I can only do what I see my father doing. He's our father. He created us in his image. He created us to function like him. To create as he created. We have been given the template. We have been given the blueprint. We have been given the principles. And he has gone further to tell us look at the things I have created let them teach you they are right before our eyes so what is it that we are doing to make sure that we are able to follow to create systems that will redeem this world that create systems that will transform us as a church as a people as a people by the way one thing for sure if people follow the principles and they are not even born again they will rule the world they will have dominion the dominion that was originally given to us who are children of God so, why, what, so why, what are we doing not to sell ourselves short let's go back to the basics go back to the beginning in the beginning was the word. In the beginning, he created the world. In the beginning, he created man and made him in his image, in his likeness, desired that we function like him and then be able to do great exploits. But before that, we need to know our God. Like Daniel said, that those who know their God shall do great exploits. The knowing our God is his word. His word is the principles that he expects us to do. Because he said he has exalted his principles, his word above his name. If he has exalted it above his name, what are we missing? May God help us to get back to the basics. May God help us 
to hear clearly. May God help us to function like him. For he has given us authority. He has given us power. He has given us enablement. He has given us his word that we can use to go and reign on earth to change this world, to transform lives, to make things better for the world. We cannot continue to be ruled by the people that do not know the word. I don't mean ruling in terms of governance. I mean in terms of influence. Yes, we ha- the church has to get back its place. So I pray this, I pray this evening that you go back to your closet and, and closet you. ask God why am I here? What is it do I need to learn? How can I be equipped? What have I missed to be able to fulfill my potential? To be able to fulfill my purpose on earth? Because we are not here to live and die. We are here to recreate we are here to be part of the redemptive purpose of God praise the Lord may the Lord bless you let us pray may you please stand up I request you to stand up let's pray in this word that we have shared that the Lord will multiply it in our hearts And as you stand up to pray, I want you to think about the things that God has spoken to you about. The calling that God has given to you. The assignments that God has given you. The directions that God has given you. And ask the Lord God Almighty to give you clarity to be able to follow through with what he has asked you. Our God and our Father, we come before you once again. We want to thank you because your word is alive and active. We want to thank you because your word does not grow go for, without impact. We want to thank you for it is not in vain. We want to thank you because you created us in your image. You created us in your likeness. You created us to function like you, my Father. But many times we have fallen short of that King of Kings. And we ask that you forgive us, Lord, when we have not gone the extra mile, when we have not looked at what you have given us a blueprint and followed through, when we have been blinded by your hand rather than your heart, Lord. I pray in this evening, King of Kings, that you teach us, my God and my Father, that you help us learn and relearn, King of Kings, that you help us and learn the things that we need to unlearn, that you help us rid ourselves of every heaviness, that we rid ourselves of every encumbrance, that we look straight to the hills, my God, that we look straight in your face, my God, that we will draw from your inspiration, that we will draw from the things you have created, that we will draw from the principles you have so generously shared with us, that, Father, we will do as you desire us to do, that, Father, we will not just pass through, my Father, that we will not just occupy space, that we will not just walk through the world without any impact, that, Lord, we will know that you have called us King of Kings to be transformed and to transform others, that, Lord, that shall be top of our agenda, Father, but because we cannot do that without you, we ask, Lord, for your equipping. We pray, Father, that you equip each one of us, that your word shall dwell richly in each one of us, that your word shall dwell richly in our lives, that your word shall dwell richly in our families, that your word shall dwell richly in our churches, that your word shall dwell richly in our pastors, that they shall never stop laboring in the spirit, that they'll continue to seek after you, 
that they relentlessly pursue that which you have called them to do. That they look after the sheep that you have given to them. That us, the sheep, will also follow relentlessly. That, Father, you teach us the true doctrine, my Father. That, Lord God Almighty, you who is the ruler of the heaven and earth shall meet each one of us at our point of need, Lord, in terms of our assignments, Lord, in terms of the lives that you have given to us, in terms of the direction that we are, in terms of the places you have placed us, in the marketplace, in the churches, in schools, that wherever we are, we shall not walk as those who have no knowledge. For you have given us everything pertaining to life and godliness. And so we want to thank you. Because your word is truth, your word is power, and your word is authority. And so we walk out, Lord God, empowered for your service. May you guard and guide us. May you keep us alert to your leading. May we never stop learning. For in Jesus' name we have.